So, last session, like I said, was very informational. Uh, <laughs> you were rescued by Esmeralda, who took you, you know, journeyed you up to the... Oh, before I actually, before I start, let me tell you uh, that I have been doing traveling on the wrong scale. Uh, which is a big relief, hopefully, to all of you, because no longer will you be traveling for days upon days in Barovia, because I was doing it four times the scale that it should have been. Um, so we've basically already killed Strahd by this point in background. <laughs> Probably not that far, but you definitely would have made it to Volaki by now. Uh, so we're Volaki. level seven then. No, you're not. That's not. Just take all these all, goddamn all that, bats. All of that happened. Y'all were just really, really slow travelers. I, it's crazy. I don't know. Y'all were just going so slow. Um, he cast slow on us, and it lasted four days. That's all. But instead now of we being go back stubborn to normal. and keeping y'all at that pace, I'm definitely changing it back. Just admitting my mistake there. Uh, some maps I had did not have the right grid stuff. So, um, <clears throat> so anyways. Yeah, y'all are going to be traveling much, much faster. Uh, so actually, let me go ahead and throw y'all on a map and show you how much faster. Because it's pretty, pretty ridiculous. So. so the encounters, were those random encounters each night? Or were they prescribed encounters based off the location we were at? You'll never know. Pure, pure curiosity doesn't really, not really reference. Man, is that really how that is? Or do I need to zoom in? Oh, they turned my little yellow marks into little yellow dash marks. That's not cool. I don't like that, but whatever. Okay, so for instance, traveling from the village to where you're at now should have taken y'all at most two hours. And it took oh. you like two days. Uh, so four times, no, much more than four times, like 20 times really is what the travel rate was increased to so luckily it means that y'all are gonna get to things a lot quicker now um and that's on me i'm sorry my maps like to tell me the wrong hex key uh until i found a handy dandy little sheet and i was like wow that is crazy so anyways um cool so you're we leveled up a lot faster um so yeah and We'll still use this map and whatnot, and you've traveled and gained experience, blah, blah, blah. So just know that going forward, to get to, like, you know, these points is not that bad. Technically, every hex is a quarter of a mile. Oh, my Actually. goodness. Uh, wow, so, we were hands and knees, baby. We were on our hands and knees. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had so much trouble. Um, but yeah, I also added this little box of information here just to give you a little bit of reference on this page. Um, uh, but, you know, these are things that should be in the notes and some of them are in handouts. So I'm just going to add them along the way to help not only y'all, but myself as well. So, uh, OK, <clears throat> so last session, you all fought some undead baddies, uh, was rescued and uh, kind of sent to Madame Eva through Esmeralda, who um, it's like single-handedly just rescued you from this like onslaught of ghouls and zombies and she told you oh man she told y'all so much um she he told you a little bit about Strahd. uh she didn't have any information about irena per se uh she knew that she knew of irena and that Strahd was infatuated with her uh, but beyond that didn't really know too much um she gave you a lot of information around the fact that werewolves exist and you know vampires are obviously very real which you've already encountered yourself um she introduced herself as a monster slayer basically that this realm that you're in is you know from what she understands is controlled by strahd and he's been here for hundreds and hundreds of years uh she also talked about the relationship between the vistani which she was actually born as a vistani but doesn't see herself as one of the people um and she actually left barovia at an early age uh but she didn't go into too much detail after that but she did talk about how the vistani uh when Strahd came into this area in barovia that he um, was a conqueror basically and had a large army and was wounded severely like mortally wounded here uh, but the Vistani actually saved his life, and since then he's had this relationship with them where he lets them come and go from this place, um, and 
they are like the native inhabitants. Um, everyone else, not so much the case based on what you've uh, been told and seen. Um, you've also known that Strahd actually did die many, many years ago. He did actually perish uh, and was brought back as an undead vampire. Uh, one of the strongest around. Um, so much, it's like his strength is notoriously strong, so much that it's that of a legend and that it actually uh, brought her mentor, Rudolph Van Richten, to this area to find Strahd um, and slay him. And she is actually looking for her mentor. Um, and that's why she is here. She took you to see Madame Eva, telling you that she is a very powerful seer and that uh, she will guide you the best you can based on based on your objectives. Like she already knows, she's already supposed to know exactly what your objectives are and she just is guiding you through her fortune telling uh, Taroka deck, um, which she did that for you. Uh, she also said that the Vistani, although that they are working with Strahd, when you entered this camp, as long as you didn't provoke anybody, you would be safe. Um, entering this camp, you noticed that they had been pretty much doing an all-nighter. They were all very drunk, telling stories, laughing and jokes and whatnot around this uh, dying bonfire as dawn was um, kind of starting to come over Barovia. It's also important to note that since you've been in Barovia, although the sky is getting brighter and darker and you can see these daytime, nighttime changes, you never have seen the sun. Uh, you don't know where the sun is setting and where it uh, rises. Obviously, you would expect it to, you know, do the usual cardinal places, um, but other than that, you haven't actually seen it. Uh, let's see. So, you got your fortunes read. Um, after that, you did take note of some of the fortunes and whatnot and started asking for additional information around the campfire. Um, some of you decided to partake in some of the uh, festivities whether it was wrestling, drinking, or fraternizing, um, you all had, you know, your little fair share of fun. So, um, before we ended it, it was still, it's still pretty much dawn, and a lot of them have retired or have gone to sleep around the campfire, and based on what I believe is Selkar and Ovak are taking the first watch, um, Esmeralda is basically crouched next to the fire and Torvin I believe you are settling down there but you're still awake is there um, <clears throat> anybody else still around not one of us one of the Bastani or, or Esmeralda is it just fire. she is there awake uh, the other, there's other ones so I'm sorry I need to put y'all oh no you're on the map yeah so what I currently have showing uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, the, yeah, that is the position uh, that they're mm -hmm. in. So if they have the little marks over them, they're technically passed out or sleeping. So they're like slouched up against the wagons um, and just kind of sleeping. And that's Esmeralda. Yes. Whatever. I'd like to go over and ask her about. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, this darkness. Uh, it, at night, I I normally can see fairly well, but there's no. Um, is it magical, or is it something else, or how long? Why can't dark? Why can't I see night? Um, she looks at you and says, uh, "I have never, never had the gift of being able to see in the dark, so I don't think I would know the difference between magical darkness and and not. I know that our flames still burn bright all around Barovia." Is there somebody who, um, do you have people who have dark vision, something, or at least would know of other races that normally can see at night? Uh, well, of course, I, I mean, most are humans here, but the, you know, most of the creatures have dark vision, I would assume. Werewolves and vampires do, and the were-ravens that I mentioned before, I believe, they have that as well. Well, assuming doesn't help me in this time. I can't Suffice see it to say, is myself. Yeah. So. Suffice it to say, you don't know currently. 
Do you know of someone who might know I could ask when they um, are done playing in their bedroom or whatever? Uh, no, the Vistani, we have some natural magics, but nothing of that sort. Well, it's, it's not magic in my case. I don't, uh, well, I don't use magic, you see. You oh, you mean... Darkness could be, yeah. We have no experts, I, I... basically, is what I'm telling you. Got it. No, that makes sense. Thank you. Uh... So y'all did start your okay. long rest. Um, so yeah. <laughs> the other thing I want to do is cast Control Flame. I want to grab a couple of rocks around. And... Um... I want to take. I want to cast Control Flame. Uh, sorry, Continual Flame on one of them, and just toss it in my bag. Uh, I will. <laughs> is it on fire in your bag? What is Continual Flame? No. Do? Let me just. Continual toss this Flame is thing in my bag. Oh. coolest shit. Uh... Okay, so you get to do a command word. Uh, yeah, it just it's oh, it it's no uh, heat. so it just stays. No heat. Oh, it can be covered or hidden, but not smothered or quenched. I would have loved for you to set all of your stuff on fire. <laughs> 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 Until dispelled. I've been... huh. So I, I just... Okay. Just toss one in my bag. It's a, unfortunately a second second level spell, but... Um, I don't... It's not one of your I've new just... spells, right? Because you're not level four yet. Oh, good question. Let me triple check. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a great question. <clears throat> um. Wait, that is definitely not my character sheet. You know, I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure. So I will, since I've already done it, uh, I take it. I won't cast that. I'll leave it as is, and I'll I'll deal with that later because I don't know. Okay. I don't know when I took that spell and when I didn't. Okay. Yeah. Forget it. Um. All right. Or is there Ovok and Selkar? Is there anything else that? Uh, during yeah. your, your watch. So, is there any food in this camp? Yeah, there's there's kind of food uh, littered around. Ovok already ate me last uh, session. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't go all the way. Uh, no, I was talking about, I don't know, it was the cat. It was Laszlo who ate me. <laughs> it was Laszlo. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> um... Yeah, there's so you you have seen um, them like eating, and there's crates and whatnot. Yeah, it was Laszlo that took the, the yeah. Uh, um, so yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so would they be willing to share the food with me? They're all asleep. So. Okay, so I'm gonna go look at the food and see what they got. Okay. Uh, Wherever that is. So there is yeah, there's there's just kind of littered around. I mean, there's some food that is just on the ground, half-eaten, basically. I mean, they kind of just went a little wild here. But, um, <clears throat> go ahead and give me a perception check. And I'm going to use this probably for your watch. Oh, should we do it too, then? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> uh. Torben, I just read your chat, and I just won't, like, sort <laughs> sell Carnobot to be looking around. They just hear a splash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's nothing. That would be a very large splash. <laughs> you don't have to swim in your minotaur form. <laughs> just... <laughs> oh, man. Anyways. Um, okay. Scale mail and a shield. Uh, he, yeah, you would have a, I'd have a very tough time. Um, Overrock, uh, you do, yeah, like I said, there, there's food littered on the ground and whatnot. You do find, like, the remnants of, uh, some cured meats at the bottom of, like, a small, uh, crate, but most of the food's already eaten, so, but there is a couple pieces, um, of food in the, in the crate. Alright, is there, uh, like a cucumber or something? A yam. You can ask around. Somebody's playing hide the pickle. <laughs> I'll take yeah. the pickle. There's no. Tell me how the dog is. There's nobody wants there's... to let you borrow the pickle, though. Uh, there is lots of meat. You do find um, 
Hmm. <clears throat> Please give him the cucumber. I want to know what he's going to do. Oh, I know what he's going to do with it. I know exactly what he's going to do with it. I don't want to know. <laughs> Horrifying. Uh, anyway. No. Uh, there are farms, so there there's going to be some vegetables. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, sure. There's some, there's some like, corn. Zucchini will work, too. There's I'll take cost. corn. This will work. This will um, work. So long as it's not ripe. We're so curious. Oh, my God. Uh, so hey, maybe it's not what I think it is. You actually, um, you know, did basically what I've already said, you see that. Same thing for Ovak. You see, like, all the people. No one's really moving at this time. Like, this is when they had just retired, and they're all in their tents and whatnot. Uh, you do hear the river coming from the north, which Torvin has moved off and um, is over there alone in the coming daylight. Um, Selkar, you actually see and, and smell something quite alluring coming from uh, the wagon where the food, uh, most of the food is from, which would be the maggot, uh, the wagon right here. Where Adrix is. <laughs> maggot. The maggot. maggot. <laughs> the maggot. It's the same thing. It's food. So yeah, uh, if you want to check that out, you can, but you do smell something alluring coming over there. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, is there anything else you want to do on your stuffs on your first two hours? Uh, nope. You're good? Nope. All right. So, car not checking out the alluring thing? Just kind of... Wait, what's it? it? It just smells... What? It smells really good. I'd say with a 24, it smells, um, hmm. I mean, alluring like food. I thought he was yeah. looking, talking about the... No, it's it's definitely Where? food. It's like a it smells like a just freshly cooked pastry. Oh well, I'll go look at that. Where's that? We've been looking for something like that. Um, it's <laughs> in the wagon. Uh, so if you go okay. and step over and kind of take your time, you know, follow your nose and all that junk. Uh, you do oh, find kind of wrapped in a cloth a small uh, pie that's oh. about the size of like it fits in the palm of your hand well not in the palm of your hand outstretched fingers and whatnot it fits in one hand yeah yeah um yeah i won't um i'll look at it but i'm gonna leave it you know that's uh, obviously it's wrapped up it's not meant to be uh you know <clears throat> um what's it smell like what what flavor or anything I uh, you don't get any real distinct flavors it's almost like a mixture of every amazing flavor you've ever smelled coming from this pie it smells incredible. it's not like it's not like weed pie or something or no. you know it's okay. it's it's like a like i said there's it's almost like there's fruit and meat and like all these just amazing smells all just coming from this pie it smells really really good well i'll go ask um this, uh uh her name is Vistani. that's what they are what yeah, is her name again thank you jeez i'll ask esmeralda uh <clears throat> Oh, who's, um, whose pie is that in the, uh, the cart over there? It smells amazing. I'm not sure. Um, they have lots of food here. I don't, I don't know whose, whose pie it would be. Is it, uh, is lots of food mean I can have a slice? Or does it mean, uh, nobody invited you to touch it, you filthy pig? Uh, I'd say based on earlier activities, I think you're allowed to share what you want here in the camp. Well, in that case, and I have already left, and I'm... <laughs> <It's> <laughs> an abrupt about face. <laughs> That's right. Well, and I'll say, well, in that case, and then I'll, I'll cut the pie, uh, a piece of it, and you said it's, you know, it's like a normal pie size, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit smaller, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and cut a piece, like a quarter of it, Okay. And then, and then, uh, just just try it. I want to see what it. It's not magical or going to be weird or you know. So I just have a bite, and then I'll give it like yeah, two minutes and see what happens. Okay, cool. Uh, Make tastes, sure it's not really a weed pie. It tastes incredible. Um, give me one second. And now you grow six arms and a bunch of hair and. Yep. <laughs> Bam, you're a frog. It has a twin. <laughs> I've seen this movie before. 
the doll comes out of the back of my head and starts laughing. <laughs> the, doll, the doll climbs out of the pie. <laughs> yeah, out of the back of my head, and it's like Voldemort stuck in the back of my head, and it starts laughing maniacally. Oh, man. <laughs> the things I would have done with this. Um, no, that doesn't happen. I just want to know where that fucking doll is. That's all I want to know. Doesn't everybody? Alright, uh, cool. Um, how's it not going to tell me? Really? Nope. Not really. It says it right there. Eh, have to look. It's obviously somewhere else in the book, even though they talk about it right there. Dumb. Give me one second, sorry. There. Those of you <clears throat> actually listening to it. Um, okay. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so you take a bite of this pie and um, do a con save for me. Constitution save. Do I want to fail or succeed depending on how good it's going to be? Uh... On save. Oh, nice. that's not bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so <laughs> y you take a bite, and it's, like I said, it's absolutely delicious. You actually um, feel like, feel as though, almost like feel like a high, basically, um, from eating like a slice of this. And okay. you go into go into like this in and out of like this little trance and whatnot um but as you do like your mind is just filled with like all of the most joyous events and memories uh that you've partaked in and like um when you finish when you finish uh that pie slice it lingers for about like a minute or so and um after that like you just like it, ma it makes you really want to eat more of this pie Did you ask just if me... it was a weed pie? <laughs> <laughs> I asked if it smelled like a weed pie. That's what I said. <laughs> um, it's a special um, pie. Sounds like it might be. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Hold on. I need to check one thing. I mean, yeah. Okay. I'll, uh, <clears throat> I won't have a whole other quarter of the pie. Because now that I know it might have some effect on me, I'm gonna encourage the effect, but only have like a little, uh, you know, just a just half of that again, you know. So you're thing. gonna go for it again, okay? So, <laughs> yeah. uh, you did it again. Just do another concept. It's fine. Um, and you're can one, I? I don't suppose I can one. deliberately fail, can I? You're, um, I'm you're, not sure if I can. I know I can deliberately fail. You're getting basically fail. the same effect. So you're. As you bite into this pie, like you're flooded with these same joyous memories. Um, the pie, like the taste of the pie, you still can't really identify it. Um, it almost, like the pie almost tastes like those memories, just pure joy and happiness. Oh. Um, but as soon as you finish that slice, another minute goes by and all of that is just gone and you're here in this dreadful Barovia and you want to eat more of this pie. And my sister is not there anymore. No. Again. Okay, so I am going to eat the other half, but before I do, <laughs> so now I'm telling me, say I had a quarter and then I had another eight, and so if I have the rest of the quarter, that leaves half the pie, so then I'm going to take that half of the pie though first and gently put it in my bag. No, no, How many I am going to of put it. How many pies exist in a pie? Wait, what? If you keep I had, eating I half had, the took, pie, yeah, it just I gets took smaller a, and smaller. I, yeah, yeah, I took a true. quarter of it. I took Infinite a quarter pie. of it. Yeah, I, I took a quarter. Yeah. And then I only took another eighth of it. And then I'm going to take the rest of that eighth and eat it. Oh. So then I'm, but then I'm going to take that half of the pie okay. that's left. Wow. And, and put it in. See, I've got a visual mind here. Sorry. And then I'm going to yep. take the extra half. I'm going to wrap it up. But I'm going to put it um, near near Adric and put it in his uh, his stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay. 
okay, so that he gets so to you're enjoy eat another eighth yep. of the pie. And, <laughs> and I want, I want to, I was enjoying hanging out with my sister again and re reliving yeah. those memories, and oh, it was yeah. it's been rough. That makes sense. <laughs> so, but asshole, I did man. want to share. So do another concept. Like, I don't know what the negative effects are, but this dumb has hey. to figure it out. <laughs> this. <laughs> Yay! I get to figure <laughs> <Yay>! it out. <laughs> um, okay, so you eat the eighth of the pie. Uh, this time, while still holding the pie, you do not come back as quickly as you nice. did before. You are in this trance, okay. um, and you're just standing there, just enjoying these memories. And you're are you just, standing on me? You're just standing no, no, I. Next I put the half dragon. the pie in your stuff, and then I'm eating that, and then I'm just standing there next to you, <laughs> just just trying yeah, to trans fuck out. Just... <laughs> okay, so yeah, we'll say that you put the half of pie first into Adric's pack, and then did this. So yeah, you're yeah. standing there in a trance. Okay, um, so let me just <laughs> just tell me how long I have to stand here. Uh, you're just really enjoying it. I'll tell you when you're not in that trance, Ovak. <laughs> You do see Silcar move over and just stand, uh, eat this pie, and he's just standing there. He's not really mumbling or anything. Me. He's just standing there. His eyes are open, uh, just kind of staring straight ahead. And he's smiling. He has a big smile on his face. <laughs> big dopey smile. Are you doing anything about... Is Jake with us? All right. Uh, well, he needs to be with us because who's who's next shift? Who's the next after two hours? I can take it. Oh yeah, Torben, did you rest at all, or are you just pondering? Well, are you I was. Back? I, I are sent. You I sent you that me Well, I was. I sent that message so that you could get to it after Chris. Okay. With his well, thing. I am. That time has come. What are you doing over there? Well, I was going to just, you know, everybody was settling down. I went over just seeing if I could, you know, pray to get any kind of feeling. But yeah. if not, I was going to go to sleep. Um, okay. So you're praying to Helm. Are you saying anything specific or? I'm just basically saying, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking for something, I'm looking for a sign. I've been praying to you for a while. That's all, basically. It's just a short prayer. Okay. Um, you say this short prayer, and you don't really get much of a feeling or anything. Um, but in the river, in front of you, you see something slowly moving downstream in the water. Um, it's a, some sort of small item. It's hard for you to make out. Roll a perception check. Perception... Perception, where are you, my friend? Okay. Cool. You see floating in the water. That. Oh my god! <laughs> you see that slowly floating in the water. Um, and I'll say with a 17, as you watch it like slowly make its way, you swear that you can see that it took like one or two swim strokes as you're watching it <laughs> go down the river. Hold on. But as soon as you see that, like it just goes back to like just you know motionless and just floating <laughs> you could have sworn that you saw it take a couple strokes oh yeah, man you tell with you, chris you <laughs> wanted to know where it was <laughs> at least it's not coming out of the back of my head going <laughs> just gonna like reach up and just scratch my top of my head and go i'm listening <laughs> and i'm going to go Get all this crap off my screen. I'm gonna go lay down. <clears throat> okay. There. Lay down over there. 
Yeah. Just sort of like a grab on the car. Has a yeah. Okay, cool. Um, sounds good. Do we have Jake back now? And I want to say that Torben did all this while Chris was eating that pie, and then, you know, I'll take third watch, maybe. I'm going to get rest. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, Jake, uh, you did see Chris, uh, as I mentioned, I'm not sure if you were here, but you did see him eat this pie, and now he's in this, uh, you just, well, you don't know. You basically see him eat this pie, he puts half of it inside Adric's bag, and you see him just kind of staring off into the nothingness of, of basically north with just a big smile on his face his eyes are open just staring straight at so normally i'd be very pissed off because he just ate somebody's pie but you know ovox been through some shit and you, you did see me kind of... oh were you hmm? not here when he spoke to esmeralda i was sleeping no you've been awake this whole time you had first shift oh i thought we were on second shift i'm no, sorry you're... First shift with self car. As far as I know, that's why your icons didn't have the thing. Um, if you want to do second shift, that's <clears> fine. <throat> that's fine. I'll just no, no. On, basically. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was not first shift. I'm sorry. I thought we moved to second shift. So, <laughs> in which case, you saw me. You saw me check with Esmeralda before I ate the pie. Yeah. yeah you were. All right. I'm gonna just look the other way. Uh, time. Sounds good. So, uh, two hours go by. Um, other than basically what just happened, nothing exciting. You know, lots of like loud snoring and other sounds. And, you know, kind of the nature <laughs> stuff is waking up around you. The river up to the north is, uh, you know, washing through the valley and whatnot. So, uh, two hours pass. Uh, Selkar, you're still in that trance, and Obak, you can go wake up, I guess Torvin seems to be the one that wants to, but you, also it's important to know that Obak, <laughs> and at least an hour has passed, and Selkar is in the exact same position that he was in before, with the same expression on his face and everything. Uh, but yeah. Well, be before I go wake him up, I'll, uh, I'll walk over and be like, hey, you want some food? To who? To Sucker. He says nothing. Do you want to wrestle? He, says, he's, he, he There is no... His eyes don't even shift in your direction or anything. He is just like a statue, basically. Well, I didn't hear a no, so... Uh... <laughs> consent, are you, my Are you sir, saying silence is consent? That's not consent. good, man. <laughs> yeah. Consent is a positive nod. <laughs> I'm just going to, like, quietly Shame, slip sir. it in and put in, like, a, a seatbelt lock behind him and see what he does. Okay. Um, you, so you're just, like, putting him in, like, a full Nelson? No, I'm, I'm putting myself in position to do that. I'm putting the seatbelt lock. So my arms are, like, around his waist, basically, or his chest. Okay. Yeah, he's still, he's still motionless. All right, I'm going to shake him a little bit. Am I a little stiff, bit more or am I just uh Um well when he goes to shake you, you are a little little stiff, but he's still able to actually shake you, and at that time, Silkar, you come out of this this joyous state and whatever memory or experience that you were you were having, it was you know, like I said, the most pleasant memory you could think of, basically. You come out and now you're back in this this Barovia. Being shaken by a What the work. fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm standing here with a smile on my face, and your thought is what? Fucking wake him up, maybe? I whisper, prison rules, bitch, and then I slip in for a headlock. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, if I'm a little pissed off. Do a strength. I'm just like, I just want to yeah. pass so you're gonna straight, Oh, sweet, let's do it. I mean, straight, I'm not going to have to. He could do whatever he wants, but yeah. you're definitely doing strength. Strength, uh, is it a saving throw, or, or can I try, like, the acrobatics and get the fuck out? You can do acrobatics. You can contest yeah. it however way you want to. Nice. It's actually an 18. I, I rolled the strength saving, so it's like an 18. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah My 1 plus 3 hold. doesn't help. Yeah, Silkar, you, you flail helplessly what? in this hold. I'm going to protect... Do I have any pie left? No. 
Or is it all gone? It's all in oh. Adric's bag. So, I mean, there's, it's not like I took one bite and was gone. I, you know, okay. No, you finished it. No, fuck. Okay. okay. I think it's clear I won, so I'm just going to let go. Okay. And then do a like, little Jake, like, yeah, Obak number one. I don't say that, but that's kind of like my dance. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm going to half heartedly punch him. All See right. if I hit. She's going to put you in the ground. <laughs> Hey, I've got a minus one to strength. You may not even notice. <laughs> uh, maybe. That's true. That's uh, fair. 1d20. What is the... Do I add anything, or is that just a d20 because of my minus one strength? What's a what's a, what's an improvised thing? Do I add anything to it? Yeah, you <laughs> You're going to add your strength and efficiency. So that's a two, then, for the attack roll. And hold on. So two. And a plus initial. Yeah. Uh, wait. I get to add my proficiency, so it's a four now. <laughs> you, don't, you don't hit this, like, really horrible punch that you... I don't... I guess can I interpret that right as a high, high five? I don't... Can I like, <laughs> interpret it as a high five and just, like, meet it? Sure. And just, like, high five him? Yeah. Because that's... Yeah, really, good fight. It's really awkward. Fuck you, you... <laughs> fuck you, you asshole. And I'll go lay down. Hey, you wanted a fight... Turn away, and I'll probably cry a bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> from being back in, not from the wrestling problem. Well. I'm no, sorry. no, just from hey, I was hanging out with my sister. We were having some good memories. There was a lot of right. stuff going on, and then he fucking woke me up, and I deliberately oh. wanted to go back into that, and then so that's where I'm. Don't you don't know that, of course. Anywhere. I just see you, dude. You don't. You don't hear me crying in my sleep. Oh. I mean, maybe you do. I don't know. You best two out of three. <laughs> All right. All right. So you're going to sleep. Where Selkar's are you? Where, not where, laughing. Chris where is laughing. Are you sleep? Yeah. No, where are you? And so far, <laughs> these are things Selkar's thinking, but not doing. Uh, yeah. So where are you sleeping? I'll just, I'll just sleep. Yeah. I'll just lay down next to my brother next, near the fire. But okay. Well, sounds <clears> like, <throat> and Ovak, are you waking Torvin? Yes. Where is, where is Torvin? Okay. He's over there. Yeah. So I uh, walk over there and nudge him awake and grunt. Does Torvin wake up? He oh yeah, he should. <laughs> <laughs> he's in a he's in a trance too. No, I'm just no. He's yeah. You wake him up. I give my hand out so he can help me up. If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. <laughs> Man, I got like this little detail work. <laughs> I do help him up though. I raise. I was about to say I raise up my. Mean Gate. girls. <laughs> no, I do help him up. I, I get him. I'm saying. Okay. Cool. And then I I walk over back to over the fire and you know, curl up. <clears throat> All right. Cool. Uh, so you're gonna sleep. So Torvin, this is your thing. I don't know where you're going. I just moved you. Um, but yeah. So what do you want to do? Or two hours. Um, I will say that. As you're like, if you're walking up to the fire and even looking at Esmeralda, she her eyes are closed, but she's doing um, kind of like uh, Inuyasha, or like samurai sleep, where she's like holding her sword. Okay, uh, I know what you mean. Sitting down, yeah, cross-legged or whatever, kind of at the ready. Something you've seen before as a soldier. Uh, yeah. So you know what state she's in. I am going to. I mean, I'm gonna say I'm rested. Gonna say that you're rested? You uh, tell the DM, I'm, no, I'm, rested. I'm asking. I'm asking you. I'm I'm rested, right? No. No. You've only been asleep for two hours. Okay, that's what I'm asking. I was gonna just do like a patrol. No, everybody else is sleeping. Is not not even gonna get a play tonight. I'm just. <laughs> I hope they are. Uh, anyways, yeah, you still. So you need to roll perception and tell me if you're doing anything other than looking out. No. Uh, Florida. You don't want to go by the river and save your... Uh, that thing's gone by now. That's Selkar's strange. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him in the morning. Swam out, got it, and then later wake Selkar up with it. <laughs> <laughs> I remembered the curse because he told me. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah no, Y'all didn't like that. You would definitely remember that. Uh, uh, all right, okay. With a three, uh, 
Um, yeah, you, you really, you really aren't, you know, getting, you're not on your best, uh, perception. Maybe it was the horrible wagon ride in or the fact that you haven't had a good long rest in a couple of days, uh, yeah. just being kind of dealt the cards that you were kind of given. Also, Madam yeah. Eva might've hit kind of a painful point when she talked to you were first in fate. Um, cursed in your faith as well um so uh just really restless at this point but two hours do go by um and near the end of your two hours you actually see some of these individuals that retired into these tents actually starting to come out um of these tents and uh one wagon actually does leave um with three people in it and so let me mark that wagon it's actually going to be this one right here. Um, so I was hoping it would be the one with the busted head on it. <laughs> technically, this wagon no longer exists. Uh, because basically, you, you see three individuals um, kind of like wake up and then slowly <coughs> you know, yeah. grab some supplies or whatnot and then get in this wagon and leave. Um, I'll, wait. I'll say I'll wave them off. Okay. Okay, so yeah, um, but after that, two hours uh, go by, and uh, yeah, you can wake up whoever's third shift. I'm not sure who was taking that. Uh, Selkar and Olak took first. I took second. So I, I guess uh, Alaria, because I'm assuming Laszlo is pretty tuckered out. <laughs> So you're going to go wake up Alaria. You know that she's down in the southern wagon. Yeah. Well, I just kind of shake her shoulder a little bit. Okay. Uh, Alaria, you wake up, and uh, you see Torvin waking you up. Also, you see um, one of these Vistani men uh, lying next to you is also decide to sleep in the same wagon that you're in. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he's there all snoring and, you know, smells horrible like just alcohol kind of coming off his breath uh, just look at her and say a few feet away <laughs> smell it. it doesn't smell very good um but he is you know he didn't lie on top of you or anything i guess uh, or maybe you don't i don't know maybe you know it's been a I'm just gonna much. chuckle and say friend uh, of yours <laughs> but yeah. how attractive is he I'm, I'm going to climb, climb out of the wagon and I guess um, hmm kind of just look around the camp okay just do a perception and Torben are you uh, going to sleep yeah I'm gonna lay right next to that guy <laughs> okay, so you're gonna see him. I see somebody gonna, like him no he's gonna wake up to see me <laughs> Torben gets in the wagon, it starts to do a little willy, and then settles back in. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, perception 20, cool. Um, so, uh, all right, so first of all, are you doing I'll anything? forget that I will be. You'll be what? So specifically, you know, I will be checking the tree lines and the right. sky for, for creepy bats and crows and... And yeah, then you're looking just for danger. Looking around. You're looking for danger. Um, yep. Specifically danger from the, and from the skies. And apparently he You need to somehow be looking underground and in the skies at the same time. It's going to be tough. Uh, but you got 20. Mm -hmm. uh, are you doing anything else other than looking out for that? Is there anything specific that you want to do? Um, as far as... I mean, I'm kind of just like meandering through the, the little village here. Okay. Uh, cool. Um, ba -ba -ba. let me see. <coughs> I yeah. yeah, you okay over there? It's what well, I did. <laughs> cool. Uh, I want to roll a real die. Because at this point, everybody else is asleep, right? Yeah, everyone's asleep. Uh, you do see Esmeralda over in this uh, state that you've seen Torvin in before as well, where she's at like this. 
she's asleep, but she is clutching her sword and has it kind of at the ready. Um, All right, and who's on watch with me? No one. You're by yourself. They didn't wake anybody else up. No, you're you're all by yourself. Torvin uh, was all by himself and woke you up. So, all right, let's see what I rolled. Uh, okay, so oh, I don't like that. I'm not doing that. Uh, I don't like my roll. I'm gonna change it. Uh, so yeah, you do meander around the village and um, you see much of what I've already explained. So there's some half-eaten. Uh, Ovak, you should ask for fruit because there's actually like apples and pears and shit. Uh, for some reason, vegetables are really hard for me to, to think of. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, you do see some of these like food items uh, around, and um, something that does catch your eye is that in one of the the wagons, this wagon here, um, right near like the entry to it. You see a small pouch. Um, that's pretty much that all catches your eye as far as like valuables. Um, but as far as danger, you don't see any in the immediate threats or anything. Every everything's pretty quiet. You do hear um, some rumblings in not from this wagon, <clears throat> but from like this tent. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not that tent. Uh, it would be over back here in this tent. You hear like some some movement and stuff going on in that tent, um, but that's all. Okay. Then I would like to kind of sneak over and kind of crouch <coughs> down and let's check out this pouch. Okay. Uh, just do just do a stealth check. You don't need to do a slide of hand or anything. Just do a slide. Oh, which one? Stealth check for me. Cause you're trying to stealth, be sneaky stealth. and crouch. Gonna Skyrim style, just crouch. <laughs> crouch. Apparently not. Crouch. Uh, okay, eleven. Yeah, you feel pretty sneaky and whatnot out in the open in the daylight, reaching into this wagon. Um, <laughs> crouch though, as a wood elf. So crouch. like you're really struggling <laughs> trying to get up to the top of this wagon, but you do. You get the the pouch and you kind of huddle over it. Um, immediately grabbing, you can recognize that there's coins inside. Uh, you know, slowly dumping out the coins, you find 20 coins, but they're made of, uh, they're made of the same material, so you recognize them to be iron, but instead, oh no, I'm sorry, they're not iron, they're gold, um, but instead of the usual denomination and, and uh, symbols that are on it, you actually see a visage of a, of a person. Um, that looks strikingly familiar to uh, the vampire that has been haunting you, named Strahd. Stamped on these coins. So, I said there's 20 of them? Is that what I said? Yes. Uh, so 20 gold coins okay. with Strahd's profile, basically, stamped into them. I want to just kind of slip those on my person out of sight. Okay. And can I tell where, like, who had that bag? Um, so if you want to, do you want to, like, look into the wagon more? Because you just kind of, like, you were really stealthy and just kind of reached around and grabbed the bag. And... She reached. But yeah, if let's, you... let's peek in the wagon. If you peek in the wagon, you see that there are two Vistani inside the wagon, one male, one female, and they're both asleep. Okay. So I can put those out of their hiding since at least you know that they're there. Of course, this one wants to be a pain in the butt. All right. But yeah. And you said this tent, I hear That's some where sounds you, coming yeah, from. Yeah, you heard some sounds um, coming from that tent. Like, can I kind of pick up on what the sounds may be? It's just kind of, uh, not really. It's really muffled. Um, you just can, you can recognize that it's coming from inside the tent. It doesn't sound uh, as far as like attacks or anything. It's just very like soft, like uh, rumble <coughs> around. Which is the, where's the opening to the tent? 
Uh, it's this part that's up towards pointing to the north. They're both pointing uh, in this okay. direction here. All right, then I'm going to come over here and just take a listen. Okay, you'll take a listen. Uh, you can roll another perception while you're listening. Okay. Um, as you take time to listen, you can hear basically what sounds to be like people rolling over and some snoring and whatnot. Uh, one of them seems to be like you hear as though like one of them is like gathering things and putting them into like um, you know some sort of sack or something. It's it's kind of hard. You're just hearing a lot of like uh, basically just a bunch of like uh, snores and you know, like clothing basically, and the, and the tent itself is made out of like hide. So you're just hearing lots of like that noise up against each other. So when you say that I'm hearing like they're putting something in a bag, like there's somebody in there possibly thieving it away. I mean, you could take, take that how you feel like, uh, with 17, it just sounds like someone's collecting items and storing them in something in a pile or something, you can hear like some items kind of clattering together and you also hear some snores and like as if someone's just kind of like rolling around every now and then. All right, who has next watch? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, technically I think this is the last trance, one. So you, you can have next watch. No, there's still one more after this. Oh, I thought her shoe was three. Yeah. Okay. So, who is not okay? Yeah, there's four. There's four yeah. two-hour things. So, yeah, there's still one more. All right. Well, Laszlo, you're gonna get next watch then, because I'm gonna come over here and and wake Laszlo. Okay. That may not be a good idea. Uh. Okay. Um. I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure you saw Laszlo retire in there. So. Okay. So yeah, you know he's in there. So how are you going about waking him? If I'm just asleep. <laughs> going to gently just kind of be like, hey, hey, I think there's something happening out here. Because it is, by there the way, there is, like a cloth, here. there is like a cloth covering these these things. So it's not just open. Uh, so you could peer into it and whatnot. Oh. So you just don't see him, technically. I have him here just so to give you a reference, but technically you don't just see okay, him. Okay, okay. So, okay, then I'll enter the tent and crouch down beside where he's sleeping. Okay, you enter and the tent gently... and you find uh, two females lying next to Laszlo. And all three of them are asleep. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, Laszlo, I gotta interrupt. <laughs> they're all, all, they're right, all so asleep, I'm... so you, you, you kind of jostle him? Yes. Okay. And then right, do you bed down with those two? So when they wake up, it's like... <laughs> Cold box cries while they their sleep. So, Laszlo, hey, I need you to go check this out with me. Um, are you here to join the party? <laughs> <laughs> after, after. <laughs> First, we need to go check this out. So well, what do we need to check out? out? Some sus some suspicious activity in one of the tents. It sounds like somebody <laughs> is ransacking the tent and and taking belongings. Well, yeah, they just have a couple women in there with them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, are y'all leaving the tent, or y'all just keep having this conversation in here with the? the two ladies sleeping. I'll, I'll leave the tent with her temporarily. Okay. So if you follow, you're going to follow her up, up a ways. To the other one there. All right. So I'm going to go right here and just kind of try to peek in. Okay. Just do a stealth. People need to start observing the sock on the yeah, tent rule. The sock on the tent rule. 
Um, I knew my luck was fixing to run out. <laughs> so as you like go to move the cloth, uh, someone actually walks right out uh, as you do this. Um, and it is uh, a female that looks dressed much like some of the other females here. And she has a backpack on her. Um, and uh, she just looks at you like, um, uh, can I help? Can I help you? Yes, I, I'm just doing patrol through the, through the village and and her didn't know anybody was up. So just checking to make sure everything is okay. Yes, everything's here. I have to be on my way soon. And so we don't really know. We don't know anything about these people, do we? Uh, you know that they're Vistani. Uh, you know, there's several things without like going over everything. You know that they're Vistani and that they uh, work for Strahd, basically. Um, yeah. Okay. So are you leaving out now? Uh, yes. Uh, is that, is that okay? If you don't mind, don't know she say. tries to, like, step by you. I'm going to let her by. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she just steps I'm gonna let her by, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch and follow. Okay. Um. So she and steps gonna... by you, and she walks over to uh this wagon here. Um. Whereupon you see her start like knocking on the uh, knocking on the wagon and waking those two. Um. Mm -hmm. And they do wake, and you hear them like converse to say, you know along the lines of you know wake up we gotta get going blah 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 and stuff like that um and th she's basically answered with a lot of like grunts and whatnot um but you do like if you're i don't know like how observant are you being because there's only one you can only see through this are you like just kind of like her shadow right now or are you no i'm like gonna actively like because i told her i was patrolling the village so i'm gonna actively just kind of be in her area and as are you trying I, to do as it as nonchalantly, by, or are you literally, like, micromanage style? I'm just walking through. Okay. Like, okay, do a performance not like, for me. Like, I'm not, like, staring at her. Yeah. I'm just, like, continuing on my patrol. As I go by Laszlo, I'm just going to be like, something just doesn't seem right. And, and you know, just kind of real softly to him. Okay. Uh, give me a performance check tell you what doesn't seem right that I'm out of that tent. <laughs> Laszlo is just angry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, you try your best to, like, nonchalantly, like, observe them and pass information and whatnot. Um, but you do catch the attention of the one that you just saw, like, with the backpack and move over, and she's watching you now. Um, uh, but the other two are awake now, and you can see that they're now prepping the wagon um, to be moved. Um, yeah, to be moved on. Is there anything you're doing as they're basically prepping the, the wagon to be moved? So I'm going to just keep moving and hope that maybe Laszlo caught the hint and he'll try to... I'm just gonna keep playing my charade and keep like I'm doing my my walk. Okay. Since I'm busted. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, okay. Um, so <clears throat> they do pack up, and uh, yeah, they pack up and they start leaving the wagon. They all three get in a wagon, begin to leave. Um, they get almost out of camp when the wagon stops. And uh, Laszlo, you hear, if you're over there on the west side, they start to leave towards west. Uh, you hear some like arguing and bickering. Um, 
And roll a roll a perception check for me. Okay, uh, so you hear a little bit of this argument where uh, one of them says, I left it right here. It was right here in the wagon. It was in a small pouch. Did you, what happened? You both were sleeping here. And then there's like, I don't know, it's right there. It's, 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 you shouldn't have put it there. And they just go back and forth and they're arguing. Um, and then finally you hear, uh, it was it, a small amount, whatever, let's just go. And we're late already. And so they uh, continue westward. By the way, this guy is not there. So they're gone. Yeah. So I'm going to come over here and fill in Alari and say, hey, I heard them as they were leaving. They were arguing over a missing pouch. It's gone. Did they say a pouch? Yeah, they did. I was going to say, crap, did I hear wrong? No, yeah, they did. They said a small pouch. So, there's no, maybe like, there's no telling. There was a lot of drunk people here last night. Yes, and I was enjoying some of them drunk people. <laughs> well, hurry up and get back in there. I'll finish patrolling. <laughs> Immediately returns to tent. Uh, okay, so Laszlo goes back to the tent. Alari, you keep out, keep a lookout. Do another perception check for the last two hours. Okay. Uh, 13. Okay, so finally, the last two hours. Um, by now, it's, you know, what would be believed to be all, like past noon. Uh, you, in these two hours, you see more movement, basically. Um, you see coming out of these tents, uh, a lot of the individuals that you saw enter the tents. Um, they're all getting up. Some of them are gathering by uh, the river up to the north. Some of them are uh, gathering by the, the basically the charred remains of the fire, um, just kind of collecting things. Some of them are starting to pick up um, and find food and whatnot and eat. And uh, are you doing anything as these people are emerging from the tents? Mm. And I am putting them in the thing. So you see some of them, like, you know, going by the river and basically, like, splashing water on their face and whatnot, just kind of waking up. So, I mean, I'll be cordial and, and you know, speak and, and, and what have you. Um, I'm not going to, like, engage in any in-depth conversations un unless somebody actually approaches me, but... I mean, I'll be cordial and speak as I continue to patrol around the camp. Okay. Uh, as joyous and cheerful as they were the night before, right now, none of them are very cheerful. Uh, <laughs> they all look pretty upset at the fact that they're awake and whatnot, and they're just kind of going through the morning motions, um, kind of just gathering themselves. Um, but at this time, two hours have passed. Uh, you didn't see any danger or anything like that, just a lot of, uh, in like, stuff going on inside the camp itself uh, itself and uh so now all of you make sure you're level four and your long rest is complete yeah the first long rest we've succeeded in like three months <laughs> without a combat in the middle yeah yeah pretty much so all of you are uh would be waking up uh Torvin, you're waking, woken up by someone basically prodding you, uh, and like, uh, oh crap, he's still in the GM view, one second. <clears throat> you're woken up by a fellow that's prodding you, the one that was sleeping by Laria, um, and, uh, he's like, hey, what, move, I have to get out of here, you're blocking the entire wagon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> just kind of like pick him up and toss him out. You're gonna pick him up and toss him out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your? You have strength plus three, right? And power. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, give me. Um. Hmm. Uh, I don't think you have to give me anything, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I didn't even drink anything. So. <laughs> it's up to you whether you want to do athletics check. I mean, it'll, hmm. just do one because he's gonna contest. He's not gonna want you to pick him up. So he's yeah. gonna contest whatever you try to do. Yeah. To him. Uh, what'd you say, athletics? Uh, just do a uh, yeah. Just do athletics. Where is athletics? There. I got that are plus five in athletics. So. Yeah. Yeah, so he, he wiggles a little bit, uh, but you're able to basically manhandle him and toss him, if you wish, uh, outside of the wagon, and he is not impressed uh, <laughs> as he starts, like, swearing at you, and, um, yeah, uh, so he raises his hand at you and starts just swearing and getting really pissed at you. Um, I'm gonna slide out and just stand over him. Okay. <laughs> so are you do do an intimidation if that's what you're wanting to do? Leave it to the good paladin to start. <laughs> uh... Is it really just roll a eight? You roll a six. You roll a two. Um. Okay. Anything I can use to reroll that can I for <laughs> everything I got. Inspiration. I didn't know. I didn't mark it down if I had it. Uh yeah. So he looks at you and starts like like I said, cursing at you, and then he starts talking in a language that you don't understand. Um I need you to do a Ah, uh, what is this? This is a... Why does it not tell me what kind of save this is? What could he possibly do to me? You're about to find out. Maybe. <laughs> Says the guy who was cursed into being a minotaur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances that would happen twice? <laughs> <laughs> He's a bigger minotaur. <laughs> Uh, just do a wisdom save for me. It doesn't really... Oh, it is wisdom. Okay, there. Duh. It's kind of one thing I suck at. The one uh, thing we can tell. He's good at everything else, guys. <laughs> I was going to say, your your wisdom score has got to be low for nice. all this shit you're pulling. Uh... <laughs> Minotaur, half the size now. <laughs> I have all the terrible rolls. He starts uh, dancing a jig. Let's see. I'm trying to see which one is appropriate for getting tossed out of a wagon. They don't have that option here. Um, that'll do. Okay. Uh, yeah. He 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 says these words, these incoherent words that you just you just don't understand. Um, and then when he's finished, like you're just standing over him, but when he's finished, he just starts to smile and walks away from you. You don't, you don't feel any any effects. Great. Trying to be funny. <clears throat> okay. What do you want to do? He joins his stuff. His uh his stuff, his friends over here. Uh, uh... All right, anyone else doing anything as you're waking up? As Torvin is unsure of what he's doing? Ah, uh, that's just so dumb. All right, I'm going to well. If you expect not to be a consequence of tossing a man from a wagon, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's someone else game, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so he joins up there. Uh, Laszlo, as you're waking up, 
the females, uh, one of them has actually already left. Um, unless you went back to sleep, which you... I don't know. You didn't have to. It's up to you whether you went back to sleep or whatever you did. Whatever you did in your tent is whatever your business is. But one of the females uh, is leaving, and uh, she heads to the river. Um, the other one is just kind of like still sleeping. She's still sleeping there. Why is that? Yeah, she, she needs man. to clean herself up. Definitely. Uh, are What's you... your secret, girls? I need to know. What? How do you do it? <laughs> is that what you're telling? You're asking them? Yes. Okay. Oh, Roll persuasion. Uh, it's not even a persuasion. It's an actual question. <laughs> Oh yeah, I know. I just want to see how uh, persuasive Ovak is at delivering that question. <laughs> persuasion. Okay. So, oh. yeah, they're all like, uh, kind of been over and just kind of clean their face and like hands and whatnot. Um, and, uh, you know, one of them does turn around and look at you and she's like, I'm sorry? Uh, what, what do you mean? How do you do the needful so well? Teach me. not sure if I understand. Um... Mm -hmm. Alright, I'll walk back. They're not giving me what I need. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Alright, so you walk away and they go back about their business. Um... Okay, is anyone else doing anything? Damn it, this stupid thing. Like, are y'all... Are y'all moving out? Are y'all talking to Esmeralda? going on guys how do i remove one of my weapons from the pop out on the character sheet in real point to remove i would just close the window if it's popped out i'm not sure no i i somehow duplicated one of my weapons and oh, trying to remove the gear it. icon and then the well you have to hit the lock symbol the gear icon the lock symbol and the okay lock. thank you thank you all right, so yeah, what what are we doing? Uh, back on the wagon? Are they gonna let us take wagon? You can ask. Esmeralda is awake now, as everyone else is. Arena's awake, and she seems to be. She's gathered up some sort of food item from somewhere. She's eating like a this uh, red apple that she found somewhere. You're not sure. Also, we did not interrogate Irina yet, I don't think. Or okay. question, I, not interrogate, poor choice of words, question her on her past. Yeah. So why don't we, um, I'm going to walk around the camp and uh, ask people if they want to uh, ask her some questions now that we have time. Okay, so you're walking next to her asking them? Trying to like take them to the side. I am walking up to them and whispering in their ear. Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, you you whisper up to Selkar and Adric. What what do the guys say? That's what you want first thing in the morning. Big half work, whispering <laughs> in your ear. <gasps> <laughs> Maybe not in camp. Or, wait, what's the accent? Hang on. Maybe not a little weird in camp. Maybe we get away from these people for a bit, and then we can start asking more personal questions. Well, we can just, like, walk, you know, over here. Hey, Irina, can we check this out? This is really cool. It sounds a little murder even for me. Hey, come behind these bushes. Yeah, you're, just, you're just backing cool. Irina over. Yeah, come here. It's, it's, I got this really cool bush over here. Check this out. This is wild. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Roll deception with disadvantage. Damn it. Uh, oh, God. I already don't have the great scores in this. Okay, so eight. Uh, yeah, she, she watches you, and she, like, starts to, like, get up, and then... She settles back down and she's like looking around. You're not sure what she's looking for, um, but she settles back down. Doesn't follow you. She's like, "No, I'm, 
That's okay. I I have seen many bushes here in Barovia. If she kills us all, it's her fault. Just just putting that out to the team. I tr I tried to look into the threat, but nobody wanted to look into the threat, so. Are you saying it's my fault? Oh, yes, yeah, one person. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, <Robot>. wow. <laughs> Bad guys. I go to sleep for five minutes after a drunken <laughs> high, and I'm dead to hell. <laughs> Let this be a lesson to you kids. Don't do drugs. <laughs> you want to wake up dead? This is how you wake up dead. You bring a strange person into the group. <laughs> You take some drugs and then you die. I was not what? expect. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I'm sorry. I see how Ooh. it is, though, brother man. <laughs> see how it is. Ooh. Oh man. I know our mama taught us better than this. That's what you get. That's what you get, Selkar. <laughs> Wait until you find out what's in your bag. Irina pops out and slits your throat. <laughs> I reach into the bag and I find the doll. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> how, how, where am I? I am over here. I'm going to go over to sell car. I said, I saw your friend in the river last night. He I don't have friends that I know about. What do you mean, friend in the river? I saw the doll doing a backstroke last night. Wait, you saw this doll, the one I lost? Yes. And you didn't that's... murder it immediately? I'd say it was about 100 feet out. <laughs> well, I see you have come down with mercy. Maybe you should have your brain checked. <laughs> I would have Apparently murdered it instantly. I woke up kind of pissed off this morning. I tossed out one of our guests to the earth. Earlier. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> so when it was moving, you said it was doing breaststroke. I think it might have been an illusion, maybe. I definitely saw the dog. It can only doggy paddle. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's its creepiest fuck. Oof. All right, let's find a wagon. Let's get out here. Let's see what this is going to cost us. So, okay, okay who's the... I was going to say, I was going to put Novak on the back. I was going to and say... She shippers violently. Um, <laughs> so, Esmeralda, I'm assuming, is the leader of this camp. So I'm going to, like, ask her if we can, you know, get a... What's it going to cost us to get a wagon? Or I won't leave with that. I'll just ask if we can have a wagon first. Okay. Um, she says, um, unfortunately, these wagons are not for me to give. Okay, who can give me a wagon? These wagons are not for sale. We're, but we're, we're, like, killing Strahd, though. Like, that's our thing. Uh, you, she you looks at you that. with her eyes wide at saying that, and she says... Not keep your voice down. Do not say that here. I squint and ask, "Who are Strahd's enemies that are in this camp?" Or sorry, who are Strahd's allies in this camp? Uh, are you are you putting your voice down at all? Yeah, I'm asking like secretively, so it's just her and I. Okay, she's gesturing you to move away from the from the fire at this point. After you said that. To continue the conversation. Okay, so go back to the bush. <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, she follows you. Um, she says, uh, their allies are the Mithani. We've spoken of this. Oh, I just thought you were crazy. You you are a, a fortune teller, right? So I wasn't really listening. Man, I suck. I really thought they were the same person. I totally <laughs> missed something. <laughs> I'm nope. sorry. Um, is okay, that in character? Um, or is that out of character? <laughs> that was I I believe both. Wait, no. Where is... Um, where's the fortune teller? I thought she was in this camp. 
And she this... was in the large tent at the top right. The gotcha. One, okay. The one that's labeled not amoeba. <laughs> All right, well, no, but okay. So Esmeralda rolled in on a cart. On a wagon, yeah. On yeah, a wagon. Yeah. So can I have that one? She already told you, you that. No. She's can you know, like I mean you can keep it if you want to just drive us the next time. Would be great. Uh, she says no. I've already told uh, Adric that my my travels are not the same as yours, uh, and I will not be taking a wagon. And these are not mine. I was sent by Madame Eva to claim you all and bring you here, and that's why they let me use the wagon. It's not mine. Okay, but I have sixteen gold. You can have if you, uh, you do, like if you can help us. I'm, I'm sorry. I've, I've done as much help for you as I can at the moment. Uh, fine, but when we killed Strahd, I'm not putting your name on any plaque. This is, this can be our victory. Appreciate the uh, trip, but I'm all about that. Right, good thing. So <laughs> you're just um, like slowly talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about that. <laughs> all right, so okay, who else can I ask for? Okay, let's go up to the girls and just ask them if they have a cart that I can rent. Uh, or a wagon. Okay, so yeah, the same one actually turns around. <laughs> she says, "No, we uh, the ones in in camp are going to stay here." Why? But I want one, and I'm willing to pay for it. I'm sorry. We need them. And return it. I understand. I With a full tank? Yeah. <laughs> but this is about fighting evil. Good luck with that. All right, my... All right, to the tent, find the old woman. Let's ask her. Can we have a cart? <laughs> I'm going to knock on the tent door. Uh, okay, so you knock on the tent. Cloth. Uh, to, to no answer. To no answer. Okay, so no one's inside? There's or I no don't answer. think anyone's inside? Alright, I'm good. Is it, like, secured in any way? Can I just, like, open the tent flap and walk in? You can try. <laughs> sure, I'm gonna try to walk in. Okay. This is amazing. Uh, yeah, like, you move the cloth to the side and step in, and it's, you know, an empty tent. Uh, it seems that there was anything here other than you know uh, bed rolls. That's all. That, that's all that exists here. No. Okay. So back to the group, um, and quietly, so that the other miscreants can't hear me. Um, how do we feel about commandeering one of these carts? Because like I feel like we have righteousness on our side, and we should definitely make a stealth check. Because you're literally ten feet from these people. They're, they're, well, there's five feet from them. I moved over here before I said that. It's over here. They can't hear me now. Oh, well, y'all are <laughs> wanting to fight these people. <laughs> no, I really, really don't. But it's uh, like, it's holy shit, funny. how hard is it to get a cart in here? Can I just say I'm a lover, not a fighter? <laughs> I'll let him fight on his own. So just if it comes to it. Uh, okay, so yeah, you are well. You can talk to him and tell him that. Uh, or tell All him right. that. Uh, y'all are just, in conversation now. So. Yeah, this is more to... Um, I'll put you over here for the sake of this. Okay. <laughs> it's I mean it's it's Adric and Salkar that I'm talking to. They're the only yes. ones like really yes. around here. So. Whispering. so like so what's what's the plan? Like we got all these carts and nobody will sell, and from what I've heard from Esmeralda, there's definitely some evil people in this camp. I feel like it would be the moral thing to do to just take one of these and go. I think you are mistaken about moral. Maybe I don't understand this vertical. Look, if you if, if you kill a demon and you take their sword, is it stealing? Yes. Because the sword doesn't belong to you. The fact but, that the guy is evil does not make it your sword. Okay, well, but what if they're evil and they're dead? Yeah, counterpoint. In, the dude's dead. It's not his sword anymore. I agree. <laughs> Fine. Do you guys really want to just walk the whole way to the next town? Like, think about how long it took us last time. <laughs> well, we were crawling on yeah, our hands and knees. That was the we, DM. We now have <laughs> Rudith over. 
<laughs> we now have a we now have plus two to our con because of our walk our knee crawling. So we should yeah. be good now. Now we're level four because of your knee crawling. So just be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I, it would not be level four right now. <laughs> Well, we can just, and I'll, I'll kind of raise my voice a little bit. Uh, Esmeralda, how, how close is Wallachia from here? How long will it take us to get there on foot? Oh, that's a good question that she totally knows the answer to. Once I find Sweet song. It. Love it. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Have you considered selling that to um, anybody that'd buy it? Says, uh, yeah. Um, she says, if you if you stick to the road, less than five hours by foot, then it's nothing. Yeah. We can we can go another day of walking. We've already been on the road for four days. We're almost already there. Fine, but if you change your mind, cough twice, and I'll be ready. I'll tell you what. If we find some poor unfortunate on the road with a wagon. Jump them. We'll take it. We won't or, actually do that. It's a terrible idea. I shouldn't actually put it in your face. Yeah, that is not a thing to say to her. I'm just I'm I'm in I'm in evil land, and everyone I've met almost has tried to kill me. I'm a little on edge, and well, to be I'm fair, you've tried to kill us twice. <laughs> what? And then you've you've you've. You've already said, hey, let's just steal a wagon from these. That seems pretty evil. It's not stealing is commandeering. This is how she justifies this. Stealing would be evil. Is it, this person. is it commandeering right. or is it stealing? So far, I've been told that everyone in this camp can't be trusted. And everything else has attempted to kill us. So I'm starting to think that's probably true. So I think that every one of these camp has to survive the best they can and do what they can. Like stealing carts? Uh, no, not like steal <laughs> carts. Because we right. don't have to steal carts because we are better. Than oh, I thought you said cards. I was like, did somebody steal from Madame Eva? <laughs> <laughs> that would be putting some evil on the group, I'm sure. Uh, it's also important to note that uh, you do see Irina holding the Terrico cards that Madame Eva left on the table. Are you guys sure we don't want to question her? Because, like, I really am curious. What are you doing with the cards? Those aren't yours. Irina looks at you and says, She, she left them on the table. I, just, I thought they were ours, and she left them on the table. It's her tent. She left everything everywhere. It's her tent. You did Red a rug with that rug? flying. Just putting that out there. I thought that they were yours. Should I, I would. Back? I no. would probably recommend putting them back. No, what the f are you talking about? No, and I'll switch to half elf. What the hell are you talking? No, you want to put some I, serious voodoo on us? No, I, I just say... wanted to see if. Yeah, I'm just uh, yelling at him in half elvish. Yeah, or yeah, elvish you're, you're yelling at each other in half elf. What's or in elf? I, I look over at Rena and I say, I think it would be a good, but I have a pen, I have a some paper and something there, right? I can. Draw these down for you. Yeah, I mean, these these people have given us food and a safe. The one night that we weren't attacked by bats or wolves or vampires or whatever, their house, an entire house attacked us. The first time since we've been here, and we want to take their cards and take their carts. I, wow, those Andrew, Andrew, really Andrew, well, uh, I thought the cards were like the food. I was just taking. Them. <laughs> I'll I'd take the. The one the place that us the, an ounce of hospitality, and we want to take their stuff. I thought I was an asshole. All right. Yeah, I'll, 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 take I'll take them back. And she's, uh, she stands, and uh, she actually goes to Esmeralda, and is like, um, I, I took these. I, I don't think I was supposed to. I'm sorry. Um, Esmeralda. <laughs> It's kind of uh okay so you want to copy okay so before that uh give me an intel roll on how well you copy these things cuz they're not <laughs> so they they have drawings on them so you might not be able to, to replicate the drawings so well but they do have words as well in common so mm -hmm. you can at least replicate that okay uh, 
trying to find where that thing went. There. Okay. What do you want? Intel. Just straight Intel check. And you're not proficient in the save, right? Do not uh, think you are, so. so you get. Or no, uh, no, you, you're not. Okay, so yeah, eight. So yeah, you do your best, and you copy down the uh, the words and whatnot. There are some figures on these, and you do your best in like you know your stick figures and whatnot to copy them. But it you know it, it looks better than stick figures. Um, uh, but it yeah. you know it's a pretty pretty poor replication. Uh, but you do in fact get the the words down, um, and you do it very quickly. Um, as you know, you know, it's kind of wanting to expedite this. Uh, Irina takes the cards and, like I said, gives them to Esmeralda and apologizes. And Esmeralda looks pretty shocked uh, for those of you that are around. And she's like, quickly, give me, give me this. And uh, <laughs> she, like, immediately walks over to uh, and disappears into this tent uh, as soon as she gets those from Irina. I apologize to Irina and say, I did the best I <laughs> Bring some fucking witchcraft down on us. It's not like this. Man, and I'll just mutter for a while. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, Alaria, what are you doing over here? Oh, I can't um, hear you. Oh, there you go. I don't even know what I'm doing. And then I'll go here to Laszlo. I'm just gonna figure it out, Laszlo. I'm coming over here and asking the group. Laszlo has nothing to figure out. We're about ready to move out. Okay, so yeah, you're just asking the group. Okay, cool. Uh, Laszlo, what are you doing? How many are still left in the tent with me? There's a sleeping female with you. Okay. Excuse me. Are you are you emerging from the tent or are you? Oh, I thought you said we lost them forever. <laughs> Lazlo, this is his home now. He's a Vistani. He is a traveler and a wanderer. Forever on the road with these people. So, I'm yep. sorry, are you emerging from the tent, Lazlo? Currently. Okay, so you, you come out of there <laughs> and... What? I said not currently, oh, but... not currently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so... In I was going to say, but if people are leaving, I would hope they would let me know. Well, we'll see. Uh, Alaria <laughs> asked the group, you know, do you want to move on and whatnot? Um, so, yeah. Y'all do that conversation. All right, so we're just missing Laszlo. And we're ready to go. So I'm going to walk into this tent and be like, hey, um, ma'am, do you have a, a wagon for sale? The sleeping Go woman. The, the sleeping woman. Yeah, she's asleep. So you get no answer. I nudge her awake. Oh, uh, you nudge her awake, and she's like, "What? What? What is it?" Well, that's all you can do better for yourself. Let's go. I thought you were going to ask her. You woke her up, and you didn't even answer her anything. <laughs> I asked the question. She didn't answer. She clearly doesn't know anything. You basically just woke her up and then said, you can do better, Laszlo. And <laughs> <laughs> to her face. It's not even worth asking her the question. You woke her up just to say... <laughs> yeah, she's well, in I, like I this... I asked the question and she's like, oh. She's in like this half-asleep stupor, so she's only hearing about half of what you're saying, so she's just like... Okay, what again? And then... Oh, you're still talking to her. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. I thought she was just was ignoring my question. All right. I'll ask again. Wagons, the things with wheels, people ride on them. Do you have one? No. Go away. Stop. Okay, Lazlo. She is just, just useless. Let's go. We gotta go. Like we're trying to get that guy get out of here and go somewhere. We are such horrible guests. <laughs> we. Please, please amend that. <laughs> you stole one of your pot pies. Hey, and I ate half of it. I would not <laughs> consider myself a horrible guest. Uh, okay, let me ask her. Like, so, throw somebody out of, out of ten. What do you rate this guy? 
Uh, she's she's snubbing you. She's not speaking. Like she's after your Especially last. If you comment, said I could do better. <laughs> after your last comment, uh, she's not even paying attention to you. So I ask the question again, a little bit louder, assuming she's like hard of hearing. She's like she says. Uh, she's like, please leave now, or you're going to regret it. Okay, Laszlo. She's she's bad news, man. Let's, let's get out of here. You're better off. I'm gonna look at her and I'll tell her that um, I shall see her again, and then blow her a kiss as I leave the tent. <laughs> no, you won't. Do a performance check. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap! I'm not talented in that. Okay. Ooh. So yeah, not your best. Uh... No, no, no. You got to give me the twenty since you know it was a good long night. Yeah, he gets, he definitely gets uh, advantage on that. Yes. No performance. After, after after all the work I was. put in. I'm not, well, I I'm not giving you advantage on that. Uh, I would have <laughs> if other things happened, but they didn't. So, um, you would have advantage. Oh, a lot happened that you weren't annoying, aware of. Uh, that. If you didn't have an annoying she orc, maybe. Uh, but you don't have uh, advantage on that. So, anyways, uh, you know, you do you do say what you say, and you fumble at it, but you do give her like this kissy blow but as you do like saliva and stuff kind of like sticks to your hand and it's just kind of <laughs> are you sure down. it's saliva <laughs> we hope so i'm gonna say it's saliva for this case uh, <laughs> as you say this uh and uh it doesn't come off as romantic as you had hoped uh but she she does say uh you can you can return anytime just don't bring her and y'all well, i guess option. Yep, we're leaving. Okay. Yep. Well, I think we should continue the barrage of questions. That's a good idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somebody in this town has to have something for sale. Uh, like there are a bunch of people on a fire. Over here. It's a camp. It's not a town or a village. It is just a spot where a bunch of people slept. That's it. Do we know where our next objective is? We're point at point. Wallaki, or Wallaki, or whatever it's Wallachie. called. Wallaki. Yeah. yeah, we got to drop Irene off at Wallaki, which is about five hours on foot up the road. Yeah, there were two. So I will say, you know, upon your note taking and whatnot, you did ask questions. There were two points of interest. One that you've had Wallaki this almost the entire time to take Irene there to get her out of the reach of Straw. Um, also to get more allies and to seek more information. You also have known or learned that the Wizards of the Wine was mentioned in one of the fortunes that Matt Aviva gave you. That's the only knowledge that you currently have, uh, pretty much from like your note taking and whatnot. So, and you know the Wizards of the Wine is to the west. It's actually beyond uh, Blocky. I look over at Selkar and Adrian Kassar. Are we ready to go? Ready when you guys are. Let's hit the road and get there before the sundown. There's all these fucking bats. <laughs> um, so Esmeralda does pop back out of the tent after a few minutes. Um, she sees all of you kind of conversing and gathering. She looks around the camp and she says... Uh, might be overstaying your welcome from what I am seeing. I don't doubt it. <laughs> there are some of us who would um never mind. And yep. Uh she says uh before you go, she says I wish you luck and I wish I wish to meet you on your travels again. We have the same end goal, but Hopefully, at that time, I'll have more information, or you the same. If you find my mentor, Rudolph, uh, tell him Esmeralda's looking for him. I appreciate you saving your lives, and I definitely owe you a life debt. Oh, 
something to Hopefully you won't need to repay that. To please pass on our thanks for the, the hospitality we have received here, even though we were poor guests. I'm gonna head towards Thank the trail. Okay. Yep. Alright. So start all of Vulcan. Exiting the camp and heading towards the trail. I'm gonna move y'all back to the large map. And then take a break. Oh Vok, is that perception for you to are you leading the way? Or is that old? No, no, that was in case I didn't get back in time to roll perception. Okay. So that was the you said we need to do perception checks when we came back yeah. to cell. What oh. is the marching order? And I'm I'm showing I'm guessing this would be the way that y'all are going as you see a path basically heading, you know, west, northwest. I'll lead. Um it is an incline. Um because you do see the river uh on your right. And you're kind of going um, you know, you're elevating up with the uh with the terrain up to where you can see very, very far away, uh, and somewhat, you know, through the fog and whatnot, you can still see a very tall bridge, um, you know, in the distance. But it is visible, I since know. we do know that all these are quarter mile hexes. I, uh, I sigh, and uh, just get on my hands and knees and just start checking. Yeah, tough, man. I sigh and mount cell car and ride in. I mount Corbin. Yeah! <laughs> do it! <laughs> like we practice, brother. Oh, God. Nice. You have to follow. Yes, I'll lead. What do I roll? What was it? Yeah, uh, roll perception. perception. I'll do you uh, and Ovok. You can. Both of y'all can be leading the way since the rules already out there. Probably. I'm gonna be around. Uh, I'll be wherever. Uh, oh, great. You're so fucked. <laughs> All right, so um, hell, those are worse than my passive perception. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're pretty bad. They're pretty bad. All right, cool. Um, so making your way exiting this camp, um, like I said, you're going the 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 area here is elevated. Uh, you're leaving behind the river that stays uh down below and approaching a bridge, um, kind of like a pass. Uh, is much ahead, um, but after like half an hour of trudging up this, uh, you know, mountainside, hillside, and whatnot, you arrive at this bridge. Um, much like you've seen, the sky is is brighter, but it still has this this overcast. Um... <laughs> okay, yeah, that is good to know. Um, yeah, it still has this overcast um, <clears throat> that it's had the entire time, basically. Uh, but you don't see anything of like danger or anything um, really noticeable, except for the fact just the basic terrain changes. This fog is kind of moving and swirling like kind of around you. Um, things are like vanishing and appearing within your sight, just as it kind of as the fog just kind of displaces everything. Um, but you do make it to this bridge, which make sure I'm reading the right thing here. Yep. Uh, so you follow the dirt road as it clings to the side of a mountain and ends before an arching bridge of mold encrusted stone that spans a natural chasm. Uh, gargoyles cloaked in black moss perch on the corners of the bridge, their frowns weather-worn. On the mountainous side of the bridge, a waterfall spills into a misty pool nearly a thousand feet below. The pool feeds a river that meanders into fog shrouded pines that blanket the valley. So basically, um, what I'm describing is what's to the west. Uh, so there is a falls right here. Um, and then you also see uh, it meander, as it says, uh, towards the west. So, what do you want to do? How long is this bridge? Like as far as like a span length? No, I'm not from like how long is the bridge across quarter the mile. It's a quarter mile long bridge. Yeah. Damn. These uh owls know what they're doing. Okay. Uh 
Okay. Um, so is everyone just? I mean, we'll consult the party, and they're right behind us. So I'll just ask if you want to just go across the bridge. Where were we going to? Uh, guess what? I can haul right. <laughs> nope. No, <laughs> no Valaki. <laughs> we're going to Valaki over here. Yeah, Valaki. Yep. Valaki. Uh, yeah. So we'll go across the bridge. Um. I mean, I want to. Can I look around? Is there, you know, how how long, how deep down, far down is the bridge? Block. A thousand feet. Oh. Yeah, that was in my little description. It's a thousand. Yeah. A thousand feet. Yeah. It's so there's no uh, no trolls under the bridge or anything. There could be, but they're way down there. They are. <laughs> okay. Wow, that's a big bridge. Yeah, are we have you here. Welcome to do perception checks, Adric. Um, based off just your passive, uh, you get a good look at these like gargoyles and they just look very ancient. Um, they're molded over much like the, the bridge themselves. Um, it looks as if it, the gargoyles were made out of the same stone as the bridge. Okay. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary though. No, you, nothing seems, out of, I mean, other than these, I mean, they're ugly and they're gargoyles. Um, but okay. yeah. I've got no problem crossing the bridge then. Yep. And have no reason to suspect it. Okay. Uh, okay. So, crossing the bridge, uh, like I said, quarter mile, um, you walk past these gargoyles. They, you know, stay gargoyles, stones. Um, they seem to be harmless. You just walk past them. Uh, as you're walking to the end of the bridge, um, you do see two more of them perched. Um, on there and you just you just keep going um, also as you're moving on to the other side of this bridge it's important to note that the the castle uh, no longer obstructed by uh, force and whatnot you see castle Ravenloft kind of perched high upon uh, the hillside to your to your east to like your northeast and uh, kind of what you saw from like the village of Barovia it's just this daunting large fortress um, that's just like, very intimidating over this whole entire area. Mm. Well, definitely a place to visit one of these days, but not today. You guys don't want to speed run this? I'll give the, I'll give the castle the finger. That's about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just give the castle the finger. Uh, as you come into it's view of this, um, it's important to note or I guess it's not super important to note, but some of you might notice Irina, who uh, just gawks kind of at the castle. Um, you can't, it's hard to tell whether it's through fear or uh, curiosity or something, but she's just kind of, she just stares at it as y'all uh, exit this bridge. And like I said, it's no longer obstructed. Um, and she's just like staring at it. Okay, so this seems like a really good opportunity to fall back a little bit and maybe talk to her about it. In your ever so subtle way, go for well, it. I mean, if you want to help me, for sure, please help me. Obak is not smooth. Want to just like... like where is she, Where would she be in the... Where she be where? What? In our current lineup. Um... You, you all just made it off of the bridge, so she's just, you know, in the midst of you. She's not in any particular spot. She would be kind of in the middle. Notice. She'd be kind of in the middle of the pack. She would definitely not be lingering behind, <laughs> and she would also not be in the front. Alright. I guess I'll follow. I'll kind of, I'll take notice and follow. Obak wins uh, and walks towards uh, Irina. And just says, uh, hey. Hello. Yes. Uh, what do you, th like, how do you, do you, do you think it's a cool, like, how do you feel about that castle? Smooth. Silky smooth. My brother's in that castle. Uh, otherwise, I don't want to go there, but I would love to see him again. Have you ever been to that castle? No. Interesting. Where's Laszlo? He's there. He's with y'all. 
Hey, Laszlo. Do you uh, recognize that castle at all? Does it look familiar to you? So would it look like the one I saw in my dream, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yes. Yes, that's exactly what I saw in my dream. Cool. Um, do, like, uh, so I'm saying this in front of Irina. Um, so what did you see uh, in that castle while you were uh, in your dream? Um, crap, I'm trying to remember. I know there was the picture of the woman in the, in the above the fireplace and then Strahd, obviously. Interesting. There was a woman um, in a picture about the fireplace. Could you describe her to us? What, was it Irina, Matt? I can't remember now. It it's looked, been a few weeks. The, 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 the painting looked exactly like Irina. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it wasn't so, wearing like the clothes she's wearing now, but yeah, it looked exactly like her. So it, it looked like Irina, yes. Irina, you wouldn't happen to know the first you know, um, I would just say after what Laszlo said Irina's eyes go very wide and she looks very frightened for those of you that would be able to perceive that um, and she just looks at Laszlo and she says you, are you, sh you saw me where how a painting Yeah, so I had a dream that I was inside that castle and I saw a painting of you. She just she just looks completely shocked. She doesn't know what to say. Like she's dumbfounded. Well, well, we do know that Strahd's been a bit obsessed with her, right? That is something we've come to learn. It has serious stalker vibes that he's gotten a portrait of her in his library? Wherever it was. Seems real weird. Yeah, it does seem weird. Like stalker weird. Like really creepy gross weird. Uh, Torvin, what were you saying? I'm trying to remember if Torvin knows about the, the first love of Strahd. I can't remember if Torben knew or it was just uh, said amongst the party. Yeah, Esmeralda told you that Strahd uh, loved a woman named Tatiana. That's all that you've gathered, but she also said that Strahd's had many brides. Oh, okay. Maybe he has a type. I was gonna, I was gonna ask, do you know anything? Tiana. You, you asked this to Irina? Yes. Um, she's still like very just struck um, and you see like as some tears begin to water and, and stream down her face and she's like I just don't understand why. Why me? I don't know why. She doesn't say anything about Tatiana. Yeah, the why is a really good question. Say what? Maybe she and Bati's a uh, ex-girlfriend or something. <laughs> or reincarnated as the girlfriend. Okay, well I have... What is Wait. reincarnation? Um, it's when you die and you come back as somebody else. Uh, usually something much worse than you were. Why like would you come back to you? Oh, like Strahd. He was a uh, human, now he died, and he's a vampire now, yes? He reincarnated? Yeah, he must have done some great things in his past life. Anyways, um, <laughs> I am out of questions to ask, I guess. I don't really have anything I can question her on. Well, for all we know, Strahd just might be a creepy dude. I mean, well... Well, he, he is, is a creepy dude. Not certainly a creepy dude. Pretty sure we know he's vampire. Um, while I'm I'm walking, I'd like to uh, talk to Adric uh, in uh, in half in in Elven and say, "Don't you hate all these stupid fuckers?" And I'll look around and see if anybody can uh, 
you know, sees if they recognize what I'm saying. Because I think somebody could speak Elven, but I don't remember. I think it's Alaria. <laughs> I think in the party. <laughs> oh, right. That's, oh, she's a wood elf. Yeah, okay, I yeah. think it would be pretty <laughs> obvious that she speaks Elven. Yeah. And I'll say, Ilaria, don't listen. <laughs> Earmuffs. Sure, let me turn that off real quick. I don't know if there's anybody else. Y'all can speak out if you have a yeah, job. People are fucking stupid, except Ilaria. She's pretty cool. Anyway. <laughs> 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 Did anyone else respond? <laughs> you know, we know another one. Look at him. We have a very special language that only we know. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. I forgot about that one. Okay, well, then I'll talk in that, and I'll say, um, "Hey, I left you a pie in um, in your bag." I what? asked first before you say I didn't steal it, but it is amazing. I spent like a good four hours hanging out with our sister, and I'll just recant sort of all the stuff we used to do together. You know, all our kind of our best memories. You left half a pie in my bag. Yeah. I'm really not past that part. I'm sorry. I can't <laughs> open my pack. I slept on this last night. Hello. <laughs> Did I sleep in pie? What's no, I think kind of pie? on the outside there, you know, kind of nuzzled it. It's wrapped in a cloth. Notorious for keeping pies in one piece. Yes. All right. Yeah, well, <laughs> is it still in one piece? I didn't tell you about it before. Now it's my fault. I'm going to take a look in my bag. What's the state of this pie? Um, yeah, it's pretty smushed, uh, but it's still, it's still there. Like, it's still, you know, it's still in one smushed piece. It smells amazing, uh, even though it's this smushed mess, mess it, it still smells very, very, uh, appealing. Can I, can I take a piece and, like, do a little investigation on it? Yeah. Try to determine what it is? Uh, Eat it. It's yummy. <laughs> um... That's what you said about the mud pies when we were kids. Fuck you, dude. Hey, look, dude. We were two. That's the way it is. <laughs> yeah, give me Besides, Arcana you're the... check. Arcana? Yeah. You're the older brother. You were supposed to know better than mud pies aren't good. Um, You do feel some sort of magical energy, but you can't quite place the school. Mm. Well, there is something before... magical. No, before I start shoveling this into my face, I'm going to put it aside and want to oh, investigate yeah. it further later. Yeah, just wait. Don't eat it. You, you need some time to really kind of enjoy it because uh, Obok thought it would be funny. She thought it would be great to wake me up. And of course... I woke I mean, you I was, up? I, w I was a little... Wait, wasn't it Obok? No, it was Corvin. That was no, it was Obok. No, that was Obok. Yeah. Who the hell you up? Wrestling. You tried to wrestle me. Oh, oh, sorry, when you were in your chance, yeah. yeah. Ovak thought it would be great to wake you up, so maybe do it when you're lying down and people won't, like, fuck with you. In Ovak's defense, your eyes were open and you were smiling. I know, that you doesn't make me less mad at her. It, so. yeah, that, that, that doesn't make me less mad at her. Just because yeah, you should really sake. talk to her. <laughs> We need to talk to Ovak about personal boundaries, I think. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> She is a bit aggressive in her likes and dislikes. Oh, if somebody would just wrestle me. <laughs> so you are all you talking this. in some sort of odd language that I don't know what you are talking in, but uh, and and looking at a pie. It's also important to note that Selkar, like when that pie comes out and it's met, like, you get that scent, like that scent again, you want to devour that pie. Okay, that's crack. Like okay. It okay. Is, is definitely. I'm not gonna make you do a save, but you definitely like want it. And when you decide to eat it, just you know what? Don't eat it. Just I'll hold on to it. I've got a better place in my bag. It's not. Is he doing like one of these? You got any more of that pie? Left? <laughs> no, I got any that. pie? I'm like, I take that back. You know what? It's not very good. Go ahead and let me have it, and I'll hang on to it. And um, I can eat it later. No big deal. The pie way. You're you're acting really weird. More yeah, look, weird you know, than normal. There's no reason to put that away. <laughs> it's just. So I mean, it's fine. Bilbo going for the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Or elf, elf Jesus. 
<laughs> it's, just, it's just that it's just that be careful with it, you know, because you don't want to, you know, ruin the flavors. Smush, smush it more. Just stop. <laughs> I mean, it's probably fine, you know. Uh -huh. Don't touch it. Don't look at it. Don't smell it. Well, you can understand none of this. We're just arguing about a pie right now. All you can gather. <laughs> yeah, we have. Uh, like, yeah, like we're playing a game of keep away. I'm holding it up, and he's. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, you're acting really weird. I'm gonna like put the pie away. Brothers. It's like, give me a pie. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll look into this more later. Thanks for letting me know that you stashed half a pie in my bag. That's not weird. That's normal brother behavior. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's totally normal for us. It's something we do on the regular. It's not. Um so do I does Ovox see this like this map that we're seeing? This does has she seen the map or know she's it seen, or it yeah, she's, yeah, this is a map Irina gave you um okay. to help you um you know take her to Balaki. So I am personally spooked by that choke point, so I would like to do a bad vibe check on this road. If that's possible. You just want to do a perception? Yeah, let's call it that. Mm. Okay. Um, with a 12, I mean, other than what I've already explained, there's not too much. There is a large, like, uh, to the north, you do see, like, the elevation rise. You're now in, like, this, uh, like, this foothill area. Um, but the castle, like I said, is still very intimidating on, like, a mountain, um, over to the right. Uh, towards your west is the, the large falls, um, that, like I said, has the river that goes down behind it. Um, you're not seeing anything, you know, there's actually no creatures around currently. Like, it's just, you know, it's just the land and the fog that's the only movement, really, that you're seeing. The only sounds are coming from your, your party. Okay, I don't know if we're actually far enough along the road, because I think we're, like, right here. Uh, basically, what I'm getting at is this creeps me out. Oh, and... I can't see that yet. Okay. But just looking at the map, that seems like, I mean, not only is it a fork in the road, but it goes to Ravenloft, and yeah, you then can, there's you this... Yeah, point that out on the map to everybody, but yeah, you, te you can't, technically can't see that landscape yet, because it's just yeah. the, the rolling hills. I gotcha. So, basically, what I'm saying to the party is, I don't think we should go through here. Um, we should probably cut through the forest. But I will take other opinions on that. Wait, say that one more time. Sorry. So on our map, we have, you know, this fourth yeah, road right. that goes through Ravenloft, and there's this. I'm assuming it's a gate. Um, and this whole thing just does not sound like something that we should walk through. Um, and I think that maybe we should consider just cutting through the forest to get on our way to Balaki. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what's your face? Esmeralda told us to stick to the path. So instead of going on the path through the dark woods, you want to go just through the dark woods. I mean, I would rather fight giant bats than whatever um, would come out of Ravenloft and all his minions. Because well, it, seemed be like something would, it seemed like something Strahd would have guarded. I mean, we could scout it. Okay, I'm fine with that. We just be cautious as we come up to it. This group is nothing if not cautious. I'm in giant heavy armor. I can't stealth, so I'm going to leave it up to the the cat. And um, I'll go. I'll, I've got the stealths. I guess I could just take my armor off. I actually have decent stats in stealth if I take my armor off. Yeah. Last well, lower, I can go take a look. I'm used to being pretty stealthy. Okay. Okay. Sure. Um. All right. So, are y'all stealthing ahead? Now, this is something that's still not visible. Um, As we get closer to it, like basically when okay. once we get near the uh, fork. Basically, yeah. it looks like there's a, like. There's a hill here and a hill here, or right. a finger, 
If we just held up there, then we could go forward about a quarter of a mile and take a look at it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. You you can do that, no problem. Um, okay, I'm just going to stick with your basic perception checks, you know, especially Adric, if you're leading, you have a high passive. Um, sure, so, uh, You know meander between these hills and whatnot you come to about there to where it's actually coming into view and off in the distance um you know about half a mile or so ahead you see something actually very familiar um it's the exact same gate that you saw that greeted you when you first entered Barovia, and that is what's up ahead it's the same large uh iron and stone gate is it the exact same, or is it just like? It looks similar. I mean, it from this from this distance, it looks very similar. All right. So, uh, unless Laszlo wants to do it, I'll go up and give it a once over and see if it looks like a trap. Okay. Stealthily. No, oh, I'll go with them. Okay. Arm vets the gate. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. See if there's uh, any crevices in this wall. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Sus. Thanks. Thanks, Jake. All right, cool. Uh, is this... Oh, that's a different one. My bad. All right, yeah. So give me stealth checks for going to the wall. Nice. I'm bent out of existence. Nice. You were both, okay, nice. Both, you were both pretty damn stealthy. Um, now let me ask this. Are y'all staying on the road? Well, let's see. The best way would probably be to go up. I'll talk with Ovak very softly about this. The best thing to do would probably be to like circle around the backside of this hill and skirt the wood line. And come up on the gate that way. Yeah, sorry, Laszlo. What do you think? As, as we've seen, <laughs> silence is consent in this group. No, I, I put myself on mute. Think I was taking myself off mute. I said that was fine with me. Okay. Cool. All right. So we'll we'll follow the military crest of this hill, just under the crest, through the the wood line to the gate. Okay, cool. Um, give me perception checks. Or just one. Yeah, both of y'all. Give me a perception check. Boop. Okay. I'm really good at this. Neck and neck. So, uh, you make it about, you know, around this edge of the hill. You do come upon the, the tree line and whatnot. Um... <clears throat> You actually, uh, surprisingly, compared to some of the other wooded areas that you've been around, you're not hearing any sounds from any animals. Um, but coming into close distance of the, the gate, you see that it is, in fact, like, you know, almost identical to the gate that greeted you. Uh, the, the gate is shut uh, currently, and... It does uh, have those same high, like, stone uh, buttresses and um, the huge iron gates, uh, just like before. So, um, and I'll also say that, just like the other one, uh, the bars are, like, it's it's very aged, and the bars, the iron bars are rusted. And is it, sorry, open, closed? It's closed. Well, and there's... No real movement around it, or sound, or... <sighs> uh, what do you think? Should we go up and take a look closer? Why the hell not? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this thing open. Okay. Uh, so you move closer and see that the, the wall that extends from this gate only goes so far. Um, you could actually walk on either side of it. Um, so are y'all going to walk 
on the other side, the far side, or the near side with your where your party's at? South or north side? I'd say south because I don't want to cross the road. And it's there's trees right there, it makes it a little bit easier. So you're gonna be on the south side. Okay. Yeah. So like I said, the, there's a wall that, that, that comes out of this, but it only goes so far, so technically you could just go like around the wall. Uh, to get on either side of this gate. Uh, it's really it's, more for keeping carriages and stuff off the road than pedestrians. That's basically your assumption. Uh, you do move closer, and then you do see that on the far side, instead of being obstructed by like the woods and whatnot, where the where the wall goes to the, the west, the wall extends out and uh, begins to fall and kind of level off around to where there's like a steep decline into like this low hill area. Um, so you're getting a sense of yes, this is this is this gate is to keep vehicles um, out, but it wouldn't be very good for keeping out, you know, anyone on foot or horse. <laughs> but the gate, uh, as you approach, the gate does not open. Well, we could go back and grab everyone, or. We could leave one of us here and have the other one grab everyone and see if we hear anything while we wait. Does that make sense? So, if I went back and grabbed everyone, then you could wait and listen and see if there was anything weird happening. Or vice versa. Or we could just go back and grab everybody because there's nothing happening at this gate. And we just go through it. Come back with the... uh, I, I was to say I'm good with either either option. I mean, I'll stay here and wait if you want. Well, you can run pretty fast, right? Yes. Okay. So if there is danger, just run back to the group, and I will, I will go back and grab grab everyone. But for now, there's, I, I hear nothing. I see nothing. You just walk around the gate. No obstacle is too big for us. Okay, so who's gathering the group? Laszlo? Oh, I'll, I'll gather the group oh, since Laszlo, the group. Okay. I think, is faster than I am. Yeah, so you um, you go back, you know, and find the group. They're still where they were, from what I understand. Uh, gather them up, and do you just approach via road, or are you going to go around the same path that you did before? I'll take them around the same path, just to keep them just keep out of sight of the castle. Okay. Um, you take them around that path. All of you do notice the same thing where you're moving through uh, this forest woodland edge and you don't hear any birds or calls or see any movement. Um, it's just very, very quiet and the fog is just uh, very thick. Uh, but you do approach and see the gate, which you all recognize to be very similar, um, almost almost exactly, uh, even with the, uh, the statues and, and the carvings that were in the one that greeted you when you first entered Barovia, is also at this gate. But the gate is close, even as all of you approach, it still stays close. So, but it does, like I said, the walls, you can just go around it, if you wish. I wish to go around it. So the, the the woodland itself is dark and foggy and quiet. Yeah, much like you've seen before, except there's no. It's it's just like completely quiet and still. Um, but as far as like the fog and how the shadows and whatnot are kind of throughout the forest, it's the exact same. Well, now, Ovak, you can do what you'd like here, but I would prefer open path to walking through dark spooky forest i mean yeah. i'm not a, i'm not afraid of fighting wolves again that's cool spooky forest um, i think we fought wolves last time i know we talked or saw wolves or wolves were on the last gate I'm trying to look through the notes uh, yeah when we first came across a gate like this there were a number of wolves that chased us yeah yeah, yeah. i like them though i i will um 
I mean, I'm going to do whatever the group wants. I am definitely not super comfortable going near that gate. I'd rather go through the forest, especially if, you know, no one's heard anything in the forest. Well, that's kind of suspicious. It's on its own, but I will uh, defer. Okay. I, I think it's just to keep, like, carriages and wagons from using this path. Yeah, well, why, though? Because the castle's right there, I would assume. Yeah, uh, whose castle? Throbs. Yeah. Like I said, we can go around it, it's fine with me. But I'll definitely throw out some I told you so, so if we get attacked by wolves or something worse. Billy knows it. Anyone else want to go on the path? Or who wants to go in the woods? <laughs> Neat. Who wants to go on the path? <laughs> let's take the path. <clears throat> yeah, let's stick to the path. Let's stick to the path. We'll go around the gate, though. Okay. I won't so try, we won't try to open I've, it. I've already been here in a dream, so I'll go wherever you guys want. Uh, we're not going right. up to the castle, right? I'm not crazy. No, we're yeah, going, we going around the gate. Uh, and heading okay. that way, from what I understand. Okay, so cool. We yeah. all just go around the wall that basically ends over where there's like a heavily wood, wooded area you do go through this like woodland edge um and uh as you've noted before inside these woods they are dark many shadows are perceived and whatnot uh you're not seeing for those of you that have dark vision it's not working uh you know you don't see in those shades of gray and whatnot and all the shadows are pitch black um but you do pop out on the other side of these woods and it's still eerily quiet and very still with just the move movement of the fog kind of just always around you. Um, but you do see the path continuing forward and obviously flanked by woods up ahead beyond that. Uh, but we'll end here for tonight.